Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, hello and welcome to Stan Energy Man. Stan Osterman here from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies under DBED, State of Hawaii. We're here for business, that's what we mean. We mean, we mean business. And I'm wearing a brand new Aloha shirt, thanks to my wife, so honey, thanks for the shirt. With my constant theme of fishing, because I love fishing, so now you know what to get me for Christmas, fish hooks, lures, whatever. Anyway, um, good to be here today, and we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite things. You know, when, when we deal with innovation, new technology, a lot of times we're thinking cosmic computer stuff, and programming and, and folks that do hacking and things like that and, and all this really neat technology that's, that's whiz bang and high electric and everything. And we don't think about it, but innovation really also means taking technology we've already had for a long time and applying it in different ways that we never thought of before uh, to, to make a difference today. And that's what today's show is about, is about taking some technology that we've actually known about for probably at least several thousand years and applying it in a high-tech way today that makes a big difference in our energy world. So today's guest is Elizabeth Dunn from Abrakinetics, and she's here to talk about flywheels, which I'm telling you, my engineers at Burns & McDonald that work with me, you know, Ryan Wibbins is here on the third Friday of every month. When those guys, I told them they had to use a flywheel somewhere in our, in our microgrid, mm -hmm. they started freaking out. <laughs> they they like diesel generators, they didn't want to use anything different. But once they started studying the flywheel technology, they were like little kids in a candy store. They, were, they could hardly wait to start using this stuff because it solves so many problems that they have. So Elizabeth, welcome. And I'm glad you could be here today because I really truly am excited to talk about this technology. Thank you, Stan. And as you said, my name is Elizabeth Dunn. I'm the Senior Business Development Manager with uh, Amber Kinetics based here in Hawaii. And um, I appreciate that introduction. I think the key word there, innovation, um, and Amber Kinetics has developed the, fir the world's first long duration energy storage flywheel. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's, uh, it's very exciting technology as we move into renewable energy and integrating renewable energy into the grid. Um, so thank you for having me here today. No, I agree, it is exciting. Tell us a little bit about how you got into doing what you're doing with Amber Kinetics now. You know, what got you here to Hawaii doing what you're doing with, with flywheels? Well, I've been in Hawaii since about 2005, okay. and my background is actually um, environmental law and community organizing, and now uh, renewable energy as well. I started working with Amber Kinetics um, in 2016 uh, after uh, the uh, demonstration project in partnership with HECO mm -hmm. and the Elemental Accelerator came to fruition. And I was brought on board to uh, connect, really to explain Amber's technology and connect with the community um, the Amber is very committed to uh, in places where we are um, looking at putting in projects and putting in projects to to really working with the community and um, so that's when they brought me on board and now I've shifted um, into this role uh, also as a, as a business development manager so looking for additional opportunities in Hawaii. Is Amber a locally established company or did I know they're part of uh, they were in the energy old energy accelerator now it's Elemental Accelerator, but that's, right. that's how they got their start. Are they? But are they a Hawaii company, or did they come here and this is one of their first projects here? Or? So the the demonstration project <laughs> is their first project here um, in Hawaii, but they're not a Hawaii-based company. We have projects. Um, uh, looking at projects all over the world, um, and are based in Union City, California. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the innovation part, the technology part. Um, maybe you can give us an idea of how the heck a flywheel becomes part of an electrical system. <laughs> well, I'm going to start with uh, this video we have, and it's called, it's a short one minute and 30 second video, and it's called How a Flywheel Works, and I think Great. it gives a good visual demonstration of what we're going to be talking about. Okay, Robert, roll tape. An energy storage flywheel is a good way to store energy from renewable sources such as the sun and wind, and also traditional energy sources. Here's how it works. The electricity drives a motor which spins a steel flywheel. Its motion stores kinetic energy. The flywheel spins easily because it's in a vacuum sealed container levitated by a magnet and riding on special bearings. 
It can reach thousands of revolutions per minute. Then its speed can be maintained with the same amount of energy that it takes to power a light bulb. Energy flows in when it's available. The flywheel can be charged at 8 kilowatts for up to 4 hours. When initiated by the control system, the electric motor becomes a generator turned by the momentum of the flywheel. Energy flows out when it's needed. One unit can deliver enough electricity to power the equivalent of 25 average American homes for an hour. The result is utility scale energy storage. And unlike batteries, flywheels can perform for decades at full capacity and they are easily recycled. So, so basically, a flywheel has that motor attached to the bottom, and when you have electricity that you can store, like the curtailed power from a wind, wind turbine or from a solar array, you can use that electricity to start spinning the flywheel up to speed and get it rotating and, and spinning. And the longer you have electricity going to it, the faster it spins. And the more it's spinning and the faster it's going, the more energy it's, it's actually potential energy it's, it's uh, retaining. And then when you want electricity, you basically don't put power to the motor, you put the, energy, the, the forces on the flywheel to the motor, and the motor turns into a generator and pushes the power back into your electrical system. Really elegant solution. I mean, very efficient, quick responding. It's, it's one of those, why didn't I think of that? You know, kind of a, a V8 <laughs> moment for most engineers when they actually think about what this means. In fact, the comment from my Burns and Mac folks was, this is the ultimate in spinning reserves. Now, yours is a little bit longer duration, but for them, it was uh, just amazing how much power the flywheel can put back in the system as quickly as it can versus more conventional things. Like, it's right there with capacitors and supercapacitors to put a lot of power right back into the system right away if the system has a big surge requirement for electricity. So yours was uh, eight kilowatt. Was that? Did I see the screen right? Was it? Yeah, that video um, is about our M32 model, which is eight kilowatt um, hour and so, flywheel model. So describe the the project that you're working on and how you're trying to prove this technology and, the, and what kind of system it's in, things like that. What? How are you using this? Well, Stan, yeah, you highlighted some of the benefits of the flywheel. I think you did a good job of highlighting some of those, and I'll just talk about a few, um, a few more. And one of it is a spinning reserve. So our long duration, so it's kinetic energy, and our long duration flywheel, you think about it as having a different, it's a different function than those short duration flywheels, which a lot, peop a lot of people are, are more familiar with that. And the long duration really acts like and, re and would be in, instead of a chemical battery, so mm -hmm. the lithium ion battery. So it serves that function, but also has some additional benefits. And some of those include the fact that there's zero de degradation over time. Um, there's a 30 year lifespan of these. Um, they're 98% steel. Um, so think of the spinning steel motor. Yep. Um, Not much which, hazmat there. Okay, right. and there's no, uh, there's no chemicals involved. Mm -hmm. um, they're quiet. Um, and the, uh, they're recyclable. I mean, the steel is recyclable at right. the end of life of a flywheel. Um, so there's just a few of those benefits um, from, I think, really an environmental and a sustainability standpoint, which is part of what intrigued me with, uh, with Amber Kinetics technology, especially when we look at um, our island here and uh, waste stream issues, end of life waste stream issues. Um, what are we going to do with chemical batteries and disposals? Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's also the fact that the zero degradation means that you have your flywheel system and you can add units, so the M32s, you can just add on as, as many units as you can. You can scale up. You, you as can big scale as you up. Want. Mm -hmm. And um, right now we're looking at a 16 unit project with uh, West Boylston in Massachusetts. And that's a size where then, um, you know, I think a good step towards looking at 
um, on, a, on a slightly larger scale than what we have at the demonstration project um, at Campbell Industrial Park. That's just one one flywheel unit, mm -hmm. one M32 unit, and that's really so we're running a lot of different tests there on um, how it works with uh, PV integration and just really giving HECO the ability to play with it to to see how it's going to be um, serving a lot mm -hmm. of the needs you know, of the grid. So um, to, to put it in perspective, if if your flywheel provides what was it, 40 kilowatt hours? Was, was that the right number? I'm, I'm just kind of recalling off to the screen. How many kilowatt hours? So the, M, so the M32, we have eight kilowatt hours eight for, kilowatt the, for hours. the M32 okay. model. And in our project <clears throat> line of development, we're, we'll be looking at models that have okay. you know, a, a larger. So eight kilowatt uh, hours for people just kind of watching and don't have an energy kind of focus. Eight kilowatt hours is about one third of all the power I need for my house for the whole day. So one of their flywheels could provide my house all the power it needs for most of the day, probably at least a good third of the day. Maybe in the end of the day, I'd need two more of your flywheels to cover it completely, but it could also take up all the shock loads and, and everything else. So the typical house in Hawaii, between two and four of these flywheels could actually, that could be their battery um, to store energy if, if you had renewables and, and wanted to do it. And I guess that ideally you'd want to balance it with some battery and some flywheel and some renewables and, and have a little more flexibility mm -hmm. to it. But is that a, a pretty good um, picture of how it would apply for a house? Well, so the example we use is kind of, you know, relating it, putting it in terms of something people can relate to would be, um, say, 25 homes for, uh, for one hour. So the eight kilowatts would power 25 homes for, for one hour. And, just to just to kind of clarify, because that example helps us translate into how we can imagine that energy being used in our daily lives. But the, this isn't a, uh, for a residential application. Right, it wouldn't right. be, you know, um, like a Tesla battery with a with a house. This is really um, in a in an array. Mm -hmm. There's a flywheel control system that um, controls the units, and right. and so. But, but that's a good. But when you talk energy example. storage, you basically mm -hmm. are talking kilowatt hours, amp hours or kilowatt hours. So right. like the buses that we have that are hydrogen fuel cell, they have mm -hmm. lithium batteries, 28 amp uh, kilowatt hours worth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so when you talk energy use or energy storage, energy plus time being kilowatt hours, yours can do eight kilowatt hours worth of energy storage for, for anything. Could mm -hmm. be for residents, could be for a, a shock load pickup, could be for multiple residents mm -hmm. for a short duration. So it can actually cover a lot of different uses. It can be um, a quick pickup, like in, a, in that spinning reserve application, right, right. or it could actually be longer term storage um, for, for a house or something with maybe a small battery piece to go with it. But, but it could actually pick up the load for a whole house if you sequence them in and, and let them go. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, it can store, and right, that is one of the benefits, just being able to sit and store energy. Um, and as long as it's got just a, a tiny bit of charge, it can just store the energy, you know, in that in that flywheel for charge mm -hmm. and discharge. And, and it can cycle multiple times per day. So the advantage to that with, again, zero degradation. So you can then um, run the flywheel, you know, multiple times, which, which is a huge benefit as we increase the renewables um, on the grid, for example, being mm -hmm. able to have that flexibility is, is a significant benefit. It actually makes it so that um, when you compare the cost, it's actually the flywheel um, is lower cost over time than a lithium ion battery. Oh, certainly. And, Much and, lower cost. Yeah, and it's in, important to 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 focus on those aspects and the attributes of the of the. Um, but I really do tie into that kind of bigger buzzword of sustainability. But mm -hmm. no, it'd be a much lower cost. And like you say, the other pieces that people forget about when we talk about storing energy is the safety aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, the um, environmental issues with end of life disposal or recyclability of the and sustainability of the asset. Um, People forget that lithium batteries at the end of life are not a whole lot of fun to deal with environmentally. And so, you know, having the right combination, I'm not saying get rid of lithium batteries, that's not the answer, but applying the right technologies in the right place to make the most sense for any application. And that's where an electrical engineer comes in handy to tell you, okay, you have this much solar, or you need this much solar, and you need this much battery, and you need maybe this much flywheel, and that gives you the most flexibility and, and the best 
you know, fit for your application, whether it's a house or a condominium or, or a, a business or industry, mm -hmm. um, how it all works together. It, it really takes that kind of sophisticated engineering thinking to put it all together. But the amazing thing is this technology is another energy storage medium that, that really can fit in a lot of applications. So well, we're gonna take a quick break and come back and talk more to Elizabeth and learn more about flywheels and what they're gonna do for us here in Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. みなさんこんにちは。ThinkTechハワイが日本語でお届けする。こんにちは、ハワイの日本語放送のホスト国末ゆかりです。各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています。日本語コミュニティ、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利
Um, and, and so that's how it, you know, it's placed in there. And balance is important, although I will say that we have zone four earthquake rating, so um, something that's probably been on people's minds a bit with sure. um, the recent activities on the Big Island. Um, so that's, um, that's what we currently have being in places where there are you know, earthquake risks. And okay. So what are some, of, you got a test model going on in Campbell Industrial Park. Mm -hmm. You got other projects on the mainland. Mm -hmm. what's, what's Amber Kinetic's view of where they see themselves fitting into Hawaii's clean energy future, where we're gonna be all renewables, which means a lot of storage required mm -hmm. um, for those nighttime hours or no wind hours, or you know, our renewables only can do so much for us, um, at least the intermittent renewables that we're looking at right now. That's right. So where does Amber see itself in Hawaii's market for energy storage? That's right. So, uh, you know, energy storage is key if we're going to be able to achieve those renewable energy goals. And I think that there's been um, increase in, in recognition of that. So uh, one way is, is really providing a diverse option for energy storage. Um, another is just actually some of the benefits that the fly will provide, like ramping up so quickly to being able to charge and discharge at, you know, less than a second rate. So. That's a significant advantage. Multiple cycles per day, as I was mentioning, as we add more renewables, that multiple cycles per day is going to be, you know, very important. Um, and then the, um, you know, looking at when we see these really large projects, and you know, it was solar plus storage. So applications of the flywheel, there's um, a lot of different different ways. And one is utility scale, um, mm -hmm. utility owned projects. Another is um, solar plus storage projects and even in a microgrid um, situation. So there's a lot of flexibility and depending on um, you know, the location and, and, um, and all of that, there's a lot of flexibility for how um, the flywheel can help Hawaii meet those, meet those needs. Okay, well one of the things that I think people don't realize too is on the grid right now, you have Hawaiian Electric that is running generators for one reason and one reason only, spinning reserve. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're running them because they have to, Mm -hmm. But they're they're not doing it. they're not pushing any load out. They're just there, and they have to be run. They have to be spinning. They have to be working in case that surge hits, because mm -hmm. it's a it's a millisecond kind of they got to kick in quick. Mm -hmm. So if nothing else, at the power generation sources, they could be spinning you know large scale arrays of these flywheels just to cover their spinning reserves. Um, which require a lot of input really quickly for short duration mm -hmm. until they can spin up more power from their big, their bigger generation uh, capacity. And, but it gives them the time to spin it up. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a really great, uh, is that what HECO's looking at now in Campbell? Well, I would make a distinction there. And again, it's between <coughs> the long duration versus the short duration flywheels. And so kind of really mimicking the generator exactly. You know, as you said, the generator has this very specific in a way it's being used. And so mimicking a generator is really more of a short duration flywheel type mm -hmm. um, service. And the long duration flywheel, although it's much quicker as far as ramping up and responding than um, I believe you can do with chemical battery. Right. And still a long, long duration energy storage, you know, type solution that does meet. I mean, it certainly um, plays all those roles in like energy arbitrage, meeting demand, frequency regulation, um, shifting. You know, all of that is what the what the flywheel um, can do and do it really efficiently um, and in a in a more environmentally sustainable manner. So, so, so even in the family of flywheels, there's different applications and different yes. designs. Yes, definitely. So, so how would a, um, how would a um, more of a short duration, high output flywheel differ from what you guys are demonstrating at um, Campbell Industrial Park in terms of a long duration? Do you, do you have any concept on that? Yeah, so our long duration really, if you think about like the four hour duration right now, we have it charging up, it's starting at, you know, the speed. So the speed of it is actually still 3,000 RPMs at rest because of the flywheel has a little bit of charge to start up. And you think mm -hmm. about it, charging is ramping up and we have a graph that kind of helps you know, illustrate this that I don't have with me today, but it, you know, ramps up and then it reaches its full state of charge and that takes a bit over four, four hours, so more than like four and a half hours just because of the, you know, there's a little bit of loss in that, in right. that process. And then you discharge, you have the full, that's four hour time duration because there's no loss there in discharging that. And so it's eight kilowatt steady, eight kilowatt hour discharge, steady discharge rate okay. of that. So to increase the capacity, so with the M32 flywheels that are discharging at eight kilowatt hours, you would add more flywheels. Like I said, you can right. kind of just add more flywheels depending on 
what your storage needs are. And as we look at the, um, you know, as we look at the future models that we're looking at, will be the um, able to increase the amount um, that that can be reserved and held in the in the flywheel and that can be um, discharged. Mm. So that number of eight kilowatt hours will will then increase with our you know future. Um, okay. Well, one of the questions I always get asked. Um, or, or basically when I'm talking to battery people and they're, and they're trying to compare batteries to hydrogen, they keep saying, well, for energy in to energy out, nothing can beat batteries. Um, and that speaks to efficiency. You know, there's always loss in heat or something. Mm -hmm. um, when you're manufacturing hydrogen from electrolysis, mm -hmm. you know, you use a lot of electricity to make the hydrogen. How much energy do you get back? How much efficiency? And generally speaking, for for hydrogen, it's like 50 percent, mm -hmm. 50 to 60 percent. Internal combustion engines for fuel in to power out is like 20 to maybe 38, 30 percent. You know, in that range. Mm -hmm. What is the approximate range for a flywheel in terms of amount of energy in to amount of energy out at the shaft there? So the range. So the <clears> amount <throat> of energy. Um, so if I understood your question right, so basically as it's, as it's charging up and the energy is being stored, then it charges up and then you can then give a command to release that release right. that energy. And so that's like that steady duration of the eight kilowatt hours release. And so how quickly it can ramp, it can, it can ramp up to that very quickly, like it can start mm -hmm. charging and respond very quickly in less than a right. second. And it can also start discharging right. very quickly. So that's part of the, the efficiency and the response. Mm -hmm. And they would say, you know, it's not just dumping a bunch of energy into like a battery storage bank and then releasing it once right. per day. You think of it as like a very, you know, it's, it's dynamic, it's charging up. Okay. And then so, it's, so when you apply power to that motor to get the thing spinning up to its max RPM or its operating RPM, mm -hmm. it takes a certain amount of kilowatt hours to get it spun up there versus the eight kilowatt hours you're going to get out of the other end. So that would give you your efficiency. So like 100% efficiency is I put eight kilowatt hours of power in and I get eight kilowatt hours out. So, mm -hmm. you know, do you have any idea of how much extra energy it takes to get the thing spinning to its its max? Is it like maybe 10 kilowatt hours to get it spinning up to its speed? But then you mm. get eight kilowatt hours back. I, I'm asking you this cold, so I don't. Yeah, no, I appreciate the question, and I'll qualify my answer by saying that I'm not an engineer. <laughs> but I will say that. Um, so my understanding is that, like I said, the resting state basically with very little input, like basically the energy to power a light bulb, is 3,000 RPMs of the flywheel. So okay. there's always some, you know, this kinetic energy concept is what one of the things that I think is really cool and fascinating about, and I'm always continuing to learn from our engineering team, um, you know, how it works, and so that makes it. So so that instead of having to, it'll get, you will be able to charge it up to it, immediately be able to get it charged up, basically in less than a second charging up, where my understanding is, say, with chemical batteries, is that you might have to overcharge up more, and then you actually are, are putting in, like, so that it's, it's you can basically yeah. go straight from that state to, like, to um, adding that energy, um, and then it'll and then it'll just smoothly add up that energy until it reaches full capacity, and then you're able to discharge it. So I think well, the loss. Ask your engineers small. that question. I will. Yeah, make sure, be because able to I, because that's actually that. one of the things that comes up a lot in these mm -hmm. discussions is comparing side by side the technologies. Right. How efficient are they at taking power from a source? storing it and giving you power back. Right. And I'm, I'm sure that some folks would really be interested in that. So maybe you can drop me a note after you ask your yeah. engineers. Yeah. I'll talk about it next week on the show. I will. Yeah, it's very, it's basically very minimal loss. Okay. Um, it's, it seems like answer. it would be, it is, it's, especially with frictionless bearings. Yeah. It, it should it's, probably be pretty minimal. It's very minimal. It's basically just going, <clears throat> but yeah, I would like to be able to, to double check and answer that Great. question. But Well, I'm sorry to ask you a question you couldn't answer on the TV, but <laughs> we'll get the answer and we'll, we'll shout with everybody out, out it's next week. always better to make sure that you have the right answer than to mm -hmm. uh, make one up. So Yeah, I agree. <laughs> So we'll get we'll get an answer out of your engineers, and I'm sure the folks would be curious to hear about that. But believe it or not, we've ramped through 30 minutes of showtime already, and I want to thank you again for being here. Thank you. And, um, introducing bad. everybody to flywheels and amber kinetics, and we're going to have you back probably once you're well into your project out in Camel Industrial Park, and um, you get some feedback and tell us how things are going, and maybe uh, come up with some more applications and things that, or maybe contracts that you get here to be in microgrids or whatever, that would be awesome. That sounds great, and I will be at Verge Hawaii next week, so. Um, Good point. Yeah. And for everybody out in the audience, <laughs> big energy conference at the Hilton Hawaiian Village next week called Verge, 
Um, get down there and check it out. We'll be doing a hydrogen panel on Thursday, and there's a lot of great presenters and great. You're going to have displays out there too. We'll have a display with the Elemental Accelerator booth. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, so please come find me if you're if you're there, and I'd okay. love to chat Elizabeth more, and I'll have the an answer to all the questions. Yep. Or if even I don't, the, I'll get even them. the power in the power out. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, thanks for being here, and thanks for being with us on Stand Energy Man today, and we'll see you next Friday after Verge. Aloha.